Howdy, it's Kyle with another road trip video, this time on Montana, Wyoming, and the Dakotas. And this is a great road trip route if you want to see a lot of national parks, some really cool scenery, and a lot of good variety with the scenery as well with the higher elevation national parks of Montana and Wyoming and the lower elevation parks in the Badlands of the Western Dakota. So just a really cool route all around. So if you're interested in doing a road trip route that's largely focused on outdoors type stuff, this is a great one to do. And in this video, I'm gonna go over the route itself, some of the highlights, some of the best things to see, and just the, you know how you can get the most out of your road trip to this part of the country. Most people live east of here. So if you're doing this road trip route, you're likely to be coming from the east and heading west. And you can go in either a clockwise or counterclockwise direction. It doesn't really matter, but in the end, your route will probably end up looking kind of like a C as you use Interstates 90 and 94 as you're out and back. And of course, if you're coming from California or Texas or the Southeast or something, your route will look a lot different. But again, in this video, I'm gonna cover it as if you're starting from east of here and heading west. If you're heading west along I-90 through South Dakota, the first national park you'll be near is Badlands. And Badlands is a beautiful national park and certainly worth stopping at on your road trip. And it's also a nice reward after your long drive along I-90 through Minnesota and eastern South Dakota, which are both really boring to drive through. But western South Dakota is very pretty. And, you know, again, Badlands is somewhere you're going to want to stop. And it's a great national park for a short visit. You can get a lot out of it in just one day. You can drive the main road through the park. There's a lot of cool spots to stop at, a lot of cool viewpoints, but there's also a lot of real short hikes. So when I was there, I did a large number of really short distance hikes and just, I got a lot out of the park that way. So you can see some pretty cool Badland scenery without going way back into the back country. But you can go into the back country at Badlands, but it really isn't worth it. It's kind of hard to get back there, but make sure you do see the main part of the park when you go on this road trip. So don't skip Badlands. Just about every national park has a gateway town at the entrance, and Badlands is no different. The gateway town is Wall, home of the world-famous Wall Drug, and you'll see a million billboards for this as you do this road shirt route, and it's just a giant indoor mall of just cheesy, tacky, touristy kitsch. I mean, it's, it's really cheesy, but you have to visit there. You can't possibly do this road trip route and not stop at the Wall Drug. And if you're not gonna be camping at Badlands, you're probably gonna end up staying in the town of Wall anyway. There's not much there. There's a few restaurants, a few motels, a couple of gas stations kind of thing. But while you're there, do your duty as an American and visit Wall Drug. Heading west out of the Badlands, you'll start to ascend into the Black Hills. And the Black Hills are gorgeous. I really enjoy visiting there. And most people know the Black Hills for two things. Mount Rushmore and Devil's Tower. And although I do think those are both worth stopping at on your road trip, there's so much more to see in the Black Hills. So don't limit your time in that region to just those two spots. And, you know, you're not going to spend all that much time in either one of them. There's limited amount of things to do at either spot. So make sure you get a chance to explore the Black Hills a little bit more because there's a lot more to it than just Mount Rushmore and Devil's Tower. Mount Rushmore is the ultimate walk up to it, take a picture and walk back attraction. There really isn't a whole lot to do there. There's a visitor center, small museum and some interactive displays, but you know, you can't hike to the top of the mountain. There really isn't a whole lot you can do around there. So, and even though you're just gonna go up there, take a picture and have someone take a picture of you in front of it, I still think it's definitely worth stopping it. I mean, you can't possibly do this road trip or not see Mount Rushmore. You've seen it a million times in pictures, but it looks way cooler in person. But one thing to note, don't make this the focal point of your trip. It's not gonna be the highlight of your trip at all because there really isn't a whole lot to see there. So don't plan on Mount Rushmore being the highlight. So if you're disappointed, a little underwhelmed with it, don't worry, there's still plenty of other really cool things to see on this road trip route. Devil's Tower is another really well-known attraction in the Black Hills region, and I do think it's worth stopping at. And it's actually in the northeastern corner of Wyoming, but you're pretty close to the South Dakota border. So if you're making your Black Hills home base in Rapid City or one of the other you know, Black Hills towns, you can easily get to Devil's Tower on a short trip. But just like Mount Rushmore, there really isn't as much to do there as you might think. You know, there's a visitor center. There's a couple of really short hiking trails that go around the base of the tower various distances so you can get different kind of views and it's worth seeing it is you know from a geologic perspective it's just a really interesting site but just like mount rushmore don't plan on this being the highlight of your trip and don't make devil's tower the focal point of your road trip because there's just so much more to see along this route and in the black hills region specifically Black Hills National Forest is not a national park, but it might as well be because the scenery is just as nice. And if you want to do some nice hiking in the back country, then the Black Elk Wilderness is a great place to do it. A lot of cool trails there at some of the higher elevations. And there's also a trail up to Mount Baldy, which is 
you know, the mountain right next to Mount Rushmore, and you can hike to the top of that. You won't be able to see the faces of Mount Rushmore. You'll be behind the mountain itself, but it is a pretty cool trail to go up there and see the, you know, the Mount Rushmore area from a higher elevation. But again, even though you won't be able to see the faces. There are also a couple of cave national parks in the region as well. Wind Cave and Jewel Cave, which is actually a national monument. But anyway, I can't recommend stopping at both on your road trip, but I do recommend stopping at one or the other. And it's hard to say which one is better to stop at because they're both beautiful caves and they both have guided tours. And, you know, they both have the easier walking tours through the part of the cave that has lights and handrails and stairs and, you know, pretty accessible for most people. And they both have the wild cave tours where you put on some knee pads and helmets with lights and you go crawling around the back parts of the cave. You go through some tight squeezes and you, know, you really test your claustrophobia and some of that stuff. But that's obviously not going to be for everybody, but if you're a little more adventurous, you might want to try that out. And I'm a caver myself, so it's really easy to say, yeah, 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 do both. Do the wild cave tour at both. But, you know, again, that's not going to be for everybody. But I do recommend visiting one or the other. Uh, Wind Cave has some hiking trails on the surface. So if you don't want to go inside the cave itself, there are some, you know, trails you can do above the cave. And the scenery isn't spectacular there, but it's pretty cool to know that you're hiking on top of one of the world's largest caves. And if you're a national park collector, you might want to uh, go to Wind Cave because, again, it's a national park, whereas Jewel Cave is a national monument. But anyway, when you're in the Black Hills region, do consider checking out one of the cave national parks. If you're taking the back roads across Wyoming to reach the national parks, you'll go through the town of Jackson before you get to Grand Teton. Jackson's the gateway town to the park, and it's a neat little town. It's got some nice history to it. They really play up their Old West history, even though nowadays it's kind of an upscale tourist resort. But there's a lot of national park visitors during the summer and fall and a lot of skiers during the winter and spring. So the town can take on a completely different character depending on the time of year you're there. But if you're doing this road trip, you're probably going to be doing it during the summer and fall to visit the national parks. Um, if you're not going to be camping inside the park, you'll probably be staying at a motel in Jackson. There's some nice shops there, some restaurants and bars and stuff. If you are going to be camping inside the park, you're going to be driving through Jackson anyway, so you might want to stop there to stock up on food or maybe hit some of the shops. But whether or not you're going to stop in Jackson, you're going to be driving right through it. Heading north from Jackson, you'll enter Grand Teton National Park. And this is a beautiful place and somewhere you're definitely going to want to stop on your road trip through the region. And if you're going to be staying in Jackson and then visiting Yellowstone, you're going to be driving right through the park as the main road goes right through it. And because of that, a lot of folks don't really stop there. They think, oh, we're going to see the whole park from the car on our way to Yellowstone, which is what we really want to see. But, you know, don't do that. There's a lot of cool stuff to see in Grand Teton, and you won't have to get way out of the car and go way back into the backcountry if you want to see some pretty cool stuff. There's a few spots where there's a, you know, a couple of trailheads right out the side of the road where you can do a kind of a short hike, one, two miles or so, and just kind of stretch your legs a little bit. There's a couple of really nice picnic spots with, you know, right next to a lake. There's some really beautiful stuff to see. Just kind of chill out a little bit. But you'll want to, you know, maybe do a little bit of hiking or walking in Grand Teton because it won't be as crowded. Yellowstone is going to be really crowded no matter when you go there. So if you want to have a chance to kind of get away from the crowds a little bit, you know, not to elbow people once you, you know, wherever you go, you know, you can do that a little more in Grand Teton than you can in Yellowstone. But either way, stop in Grand Teton because it's a beautiful place and somewhere you're not going to want to skip. North of Grand Teton is the granddaddy of them all, Yellowstone. And if you're doing this road trip, there's a pretty good chance that Yellowstone is the number one thing you want to see on this route. And for good reason. This place is absolutely gorgeous. It's just a wonderful place to visit. The geothermal features you'll see are you know, like nothing else you'll see on the surface of planet Earth. It's just a geologic wonderland. It's beautiful. But it is very busy. There'll be a ton of people there and you're going to be elbowing people left and right. So... Don't expect any solitude whatsoever while you're in Yellowstone. We were there in May and it was crazy busy. And, uh, you know, the parking lot for the Old Faithful Geyser area is like the size of a football stadium parking lot. And it was like three floors full in May. So the place has got to be a complete zoo during the summertime. But don't let that deter you because, you know, there's a reason why it's so popular. You can't see the stuff you'll see there anywhere else. So the scenery is gorgeous. The geothermal features are awesome. There's just so much stuff to see and do there. But... Um, it's a really big park. It's way bigger than Grand Teton. So you know, if you're staying on the west side of the park or the north side of the park, wherever you're staying, it takes a lot longer to drive to the other end than you might think. And, you know, it's a two-lane highway. People are driving real slow. There might be bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic even. And 
you know, there'll be plenty of times when the traffic is just dead stopped. And of course, national parks are about the only place in the world where you kind of want there to be traffic dead stopped because that means there's something really cool to see outside of the road. So that happened to us when we were there. There was a, you know, a mama bear with, you know, a couple of cubs off the side of the road and people just stopped there. We were there probably for half an hour. You couldn't move. So, you know, you got to be willing to put up with that kind of stuff. But, you know, I hate big crowds. I hate being around, you know, being out in nature, but having a lot of people there. But I didn't mind at all at Yellowstone because the place is just so cool. I I love it. It was the highlight for me of our road trip to this region. So I think it probably will be for you too. But there's no way you can get away with spending just one day in Yellowstone. There's no way. There's just way too much to see and do there. If you're doing this road trip, you might be on the road for maybe a couple of weeks. So if you're doing a two-week road trip, you have no excuse not spend at least two or three days in Yellowstone. It's a beautiful spot. So make sure you take the time to spend in Yellowstone because you'll definitely love it. Of course, the most famous attraction at Yellowstone is the Old Faithful Geyser. And this is where you're going to see by far the largest crowds. There'll just be a million people hanging out around there. And Old Faithful is by no means the most spectacular geyser in the park, but it's, you know, it's Old Faithful. It's, you know, they pretty much know when it's going to erupt. So it's the only geyser you're basically guarantee, guaranteed to see erupt. And, you know, we saw it go off. It was pretty cool. Sometimes it can be better than others. I've heard times where it's kind of a dud, but, you know, it was all right. Uh, we did a little walk around it, and it was, you know, a little one to two mile, really easy walk. But then all of a sudden, another geyser erupts just right as we're walking by it. And it was like, it was, it was so cool. And this geyser only erupts like every two to five days. So very erratic schedule. And again, just happened to start when we were walking by. And I got some footage of it with my phone. It's not the best footage ever because I was, you know, watching it with my eyes and holding the phone next to my head. So it isn't always centered, but it was the highlight of our trip to see this geyser erupt right in front of us. It was just, it was spectacular. And so you probably won't get lucky like we did, but it was really cool. That part of the park was just really cool place to see a lot of steam vents and you know mud boiling in the ground there's a lot of cool interesting this surreal geologic features and there's another part of the park called the norris geyser basin and i thought this was the best part of the park and interestingly enough there wasn't many people there it was the only part of the park we went to where it wasn't crazy crowded so again we might have just gotten lucky i don't know but if you're gonna go make sure you check out the norris geyser basin there's a lot of cool features there um it's a it's an easy walk, but it's, you know, I don't know. Again, I don't know why it wasn't anywhere near as busy, but you do check it out. There's just all kinds of cool geologic, geothermal features there. You'll you'll be amazed wherever you go. All kinds of spots. You can just pull off the side of the road, just do a real short walk, to see all kinds of just more surreal features. So, yeah, you'll have a great time in Yellowstone seeing things you won't see anywhere else on Earth. After visiting Yellowstone, you can head north and on into Montana. And if you're interested in visiting Glacier National Park, it's on the other end of Montana, right on the Canadian border. So it's, it's actually a lot farther from Yellowstone than you might think. It's about 400 miles away. So it is pretty far, but is it worth going out of the way to visit Glacier? Well, yeah, it's a beautiful national park, so I do recommend it. But if you don't want to go that far and you want to see some really nice uh, Montana Rocky Mountain scenery, you don't have to go all the way into Glacier. There's a lot of national forest areas like, you know, Flathead and Lewis and Clark National Forest and a ton of state parks and stuff. And I haven't done really any hiking or backpacking or camping in those national forest areas, but, you know, I bet they're beautiful. It's Montana. So you can get some pretty cool scenery without having to go all the way up to Glacier. But if you do, you'll be rewarded with some pretty cool scenery because Glacier National Park is a gorgeous place. There are two main entrances to Glacier National Park. There's a west entrance and an east entrance. And if you're going to be visiting any other time of the year than the summer, I believe only the west entrance will be open. Uh, when we visited in early May, we couldn't enter from the east. We only had to come in from the west. And the road that connects the two is called the Going to the Sun Road. And I believe that's only open from about Memorial Day to Labor Day. So it's a pretty short window of time where you can see the entire park. But the park is so huge. You can still see quite a bit. If you only can see the west part of the park, there's, you know, a gorgeous lake there. There's some hiking trails along rivers. I mean, just really cool stuff to see, uh, you know, a lot of water, a lot of glaciers. So it's just a beautiful national park. So if you're going to be visiting in the spring or fall, again, you won't be able to see the entire park. But don't let that keep you from visiting because there's still plenty of stuff to see, even though the, the central part of the park will be closed. So, yeah, Glacier National Park, don't skip it. If you're doing this road trip route in a clockwise direction, then after visiting Glacier National Park or maybe some of the national forests in western Montana, you can head east along I-94 and on into North Dakota. 
Not long after hitting the North Dakota border, you're going to reach the town of Medora, which is the gateway town to Theodore Roosevelt National Park, and that's somewhere else you're going to definitely want to stop on your road trip. I really love Theodore Roosevelt National Park. It's just a wonderful place to visit. The scenery is quite a bit different than what you're going to see in the Rocky Mountains or in the South Dakota Badlands. You're up in the North Dakota Badlands here, and a lot of folks that do this road trip route return along Interstate 90 and just skip going through North Dakota because they assume it, you know, it's North Dakota, what's going to be there, but it's actually very, very beautiful. So most of North Dakota is pretty flat and featureless, but the western third of the state is quite beautiful, and this park is gorgeous. You know, you got a lot of great hiking trails, some short ones, some long ones, and uh, we've done several hiking trails at this park, and we've never seen anybody else on any of the trails. And there'll be a few people at the park, it's just not a anywhere near as highly visited as any of the other parks along this route. It's just truly gorgeous. And you'll see a ton of bison at this park as well. And that's why I didn't mention a place called Custer State Park in the Black Hills in South Dakota, because the main draw there is to see a bunch of bison. You'll drive through the park and they'll be just surrounding your car, which is pretty cool, but there really isn't much else to see or do there. Uh, at Theodore Roosevelt National Park, you'll see just as many, if not more bison, but there's just so much else to see and do there. I don't think it's worth seeing Custer if you're going to see Theodore Roosevelt. So, you know, that's, that's just my personal opinion. But you'll see a lot of wild out there. We saw, you know, again, ton of bison, ton of prairie dogs, a bunch of wild horses, which is pretty cool. And, you know, a lot of bald eagles, too. So I just a lot of cool wildlife. We had a really good time at Theodore Roosevelt. So don't think because it's North Dakota, it's going to be lame. It actually is quite beautiful. So don't skip Theodore Roosevelt National Park. There's a south unit and a north unit to the park, and the south unit won't have many people there, and the north unit will have even less. There won't be anybody there at all, and if you want to get some nice solitude on this trip, and that's a great place to do it, you won't see many folks there at all. It's just a beautiful place. Uh, the town outside the park is called Medora, and it's like the cutest little town you're ever going to see. Just a few little streets, you know, there's a couple of motels, a couple of restaurants and bars, and just a few shops on the main street to the town. There might be a thousand people to live there, but yeah, Medora, cute little town, Theodore Roosevelt National Park, great national park. So that will pretty much complete your clockwise C-shaped route through this region. Once you get east of Theodore Roosevelt National Park, it gets pretty flat and featureless, pretty boring. So bring plenty of Mountain Dew with you because you're going to be going through a lot of it. But this is a fantastic road trip route, just gorgeous scenery all along the way. The Rocky Mountains, the North and South Dakota Badlands, the Black Hills, a ton of wildlife, just a lot of really cool things to see. The only real negative with this route is that there's a pretty small window of time with which you can do it. You pretty much have to do this route between May and October, as during the winter and spring, there's going to be, you know, not many facilities open. Most of the amenities are not going to be available. So, and even in May and October themselves, there's going to be a lot of stuff that's closed and you might not be able to get to a lot of the parks there. But so other than that, you, it is a wonderful route. If the only time of the year you have to do a road trip route is during the fall, winter or spring, and you want to do an outdoors oriented trip, I do recommend doing the Four Corners route uh, in the southwestern U.S. And I do have a video about that as well, so you can check that out if you're interested in seeing that. But if you are going to go, again, between May and October, then this is a fantastic route to do. But do know that even in the summertime, it can be July, make sure you bring uh, cold weather clothes, bring stuff for snow, because it can be 65 degrees one minute and then snowing and freezing the next. So just be prepared for any type of inclement weather any time of the year. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up to let me know it was okay. And if you're interested in this kind of stuff, I'm posting a lot of videos on my channel about road trips and U.S. travel and some other nerdy geography stuff. So check it out if that kind of stuff interests you. But yeah, thanks for watching. Geography King signing out and about to go drink some free ice water from Waldrug.